guys, this is going to be my review for Blade Runner 2049. And, uh, my goodness, it's finally here. Um, first before I get into the actual uh, review and all that, um, I just want to reiterate because, um, someone had told me that it wasn't clear on some of my other videos. Um, I do all spoilery reviews for everything that I watch. So it's best before you watch any of my videos to see it and then come and hear my thoughts on it and then comment below on what you thought. And I'm very interested to know everyone's different opinions on it. <clears throat> so with that out of the way, let's get into it. So Blade Runner 2049, um, what a film, I have to say. Um, it is obviously the sequel to 1982's Blade Runner starring Harrison Ford, uh, Sean Young, and Rutger Hauer. Really, this movie is, it builds on what the first film did, just in style, in depth, and in, like, storytelling, you know, and it, it's sort of a, a big love letter. I mean, the very first shot of the film is an eye-opening, very much similar to the very first movie. And for the most, for most of the film, you know, you're with uh, Ryan Gosling's character, um, Officer K., who's a Blade Runner, and he's sent to retire um, older models, the Nexus 8 models, the ones that were running around in the first Blade Runner, I believe. So at this point, um, 30 years into the future, this is now 2049, obviously given by the title, um, Blade Runners are basically integrated with replicants now. So this officer that Ryan Gosling plays is a replicant himself. Basically, the whole movie, he's trying to identify this cover-up which has basically occurred, which happens when he goes to retire an old replicant played by uh, Dave Batista. He kills him and everything, and then he looks underneath this tree because he was living there as a farmer, and inside this box is a dead woman inside. The dead woman inside is just happens to be Rachel from the first Blade Runner, who is pregnant with rick deckard's child and so the whole movie k is just trying to identify you know who this child is who where could they be and just trying to and then the lapd is trying to cover this up just like no one can know about this because they could it could basically bring down the whole system and everything and then while that's going on you have uh jared leto's character um neander wallace who basically is the new guy in town that basically builds all the replicants. So after um, the original guy died in uh, Blade Runner, whose name was uh, Tyrell, who were in the Tyrell Corporation, Neander Wallace basically bought out the Tyrell Corporation and decided to basically start building replicants out of the original ones that the Tyrell Corporation did. And so he builds these new replicants and everything, which are more realistic and lifelike and everything, and he basically... Um, runs all the source of replicants in the, in the city. Now, for the most part, um, Jared Leto didn't really have that big of a, perf of, that big of screen time, and I felt, in this film. I mean, you see him in one scene towards the beginning of the film, and then you see him at one scene towards the end of the film, and that's basically it. Um, which I actually thought was kind of sad, because I, I enjoyed his character, or at least the scenes that his character was in. Now, I don't know if there that was reason to hold him back because of a sequel, or maybe because of other reasons. Uh, I'm not really sure, but I liked his character and I wanted to see more of him. But, I mean, for most of the time, you're stuck with his personal assistant, uh, who I called Creepy Replicant Bitch, um, who basically goes around basically killing Robin Wright and basically stealing the bones of uh, Rachel and everything and going around and basically being his maid for the most part of the movie. Which is not to say that she didn't do a good job. No, I thought she did a great job. Um, Harrison Ford, I felt, also ran into the same issue also, the same one that Jared Leto ran into, the fact that he was in only towards the end of the movie because you, you're focusing on Ryan Gosling's character, which I expected, but, you know, um, his character, you know, had some sort of piece at the end of the film also, um, meeting, um, his child and all that, and, uh, 
I thought that was so interesting. But like Jared Leto's character, I'm wondering whether or not they held his character back because they want to use him for a future Blade Runner film. That I'm not sure. Does there need to be another Blade Runner film after this? Not really, and not in my opinion. Did there need to be a second Blade Runner in general? Not really. I mean, Blade Runner itself works as a great cult classic film. This film basically just respects the material that Blade Runner came from and builds upon it, and it does it in a really great way. Like, even um, it has, um, apart from having Harrison Ford in this film, it also has Edward James Olmos, who played Gaff in the original Blade Runner. And he has, like, a short little cameo, and then he has one in one of the uh, other short films that they made to advertise uh, this movie. And that's basically it, but I mean, like I said, the whole movie is just a big love letter. It respects the material that Blade Runner did, and it does it in a very artistic and neo-noir way, and that's what I like about it. Um, Anna de Armas was also in this movie, and I thought she did pretty well. Um, she probably had an, as much screen time... Um, as Ryan Gosling did, I felt, because um, she's basically this um, virtual girl that in the future acts as like your, um, I guess she's like, a, if I were to put it in today's terms, sort of like a, um, like, a, like an Alexa sort of, but virtual in a way. And she basically caters to whatever Officer K needs. And then at one point she says, oh, well, you, well, you think that you might be uh, Rick Deckard's son. I mean, she doesn't literally say that, but at one point, um, uh, Ryan Gosling's character, Officer K, seems to question that he is um, Deckard's child because he has a horse that has the date imprinted on at 6 10 21 which just happened to be the day that was printed on the dead tree where the replicant he killed at the beginning of the film was and he seems to think that was her but then it was revealed by like some sort of resistance group that it was actually a girl because he finds two files that says one that's male one that's female and Deckard reveals that he scrambled the records and all that so and the whole resistance group and everything, I, I, that's another subplot where it's just like, you know, are they setting that up for a sequel? Because they say, oh yeah, well the child must unite and it will lead a revolution of replicants against the humans and everything. It kind of makes humans seem like the assholes in this film and that replicants are just trying to fight for their freedom, which in a way seems likely because, I mean, they're used for off-world planet work to basically mine other planets and bring it back to Earth and all that, so, I mean, it makes sense, but again, I don't know if that, that they're saving that for a sequel. There was a lot of subplots within this film that seemed like they were holding it back. Just the mit just the small use of Rick Deckard's character, the small use of Jared Le Leto's character, and the introduction of that whole resistance plot. I'm not sure if they would use that for a sequel or not. But the film itself I thought was really good. Um, what I liked most about it was that it has a plot that you can actually follow. Whereas the first Blade Runner, it's kind of all over the place and everything. Now once you... Er once you realize what's going on in the first Blade Runner, it's good. This one kind of moves at a more faster play pace, but Blade Runner 2 2049 is a lot longer than the first one. But the pace that Blade Runner 1 goes at is so slow, it feels longer than it actually is, as opposed to this one, which has the 2 hour 44 running time, but you don't really notice how long that actually is. I mean, I thought the running time was actually pretty justified. I mean, it has a point, and it proves the point. And I mean, it's essentially a mystery noir thriller movie, and science fiction thriller movie. And, you know, it does its point, and um, it does what it sets out to do. Now, whether or not it will set up more Blade Runner films after this, well, we'll have to see. But on its own, with this movie connected to the original Blade Runner. It does a fantastic job. Uh, Ryan Gosling did good. Harrison Ford did good. And the entire cast, I thought, did really great jobs at just portraying their characters. But what those subplots do towards uh, future Blade Runner films, we will have to see. So, um, 
that's basically my take on on the movie um so let me know what you guys thought of blade runner 2049 maybe let me know which one you prefer the original to this one um i like them both it's just this one was easier to follow in my opinion and everything because it it felt like blade runner the first one kind of complicated things Whereas this one kind of made it more simple, which is actually funny because there's a line that Ryan Gosling says in the movie where it's just like, oh yeah, times back then were simpler. And Harrison Ford's just like, why are you complicating things? And it just feels like the opposite to me in movies. That's just my personal opinion. But let me know what you guys thought of Blade Runner 2049 and whether or not you think any of those subplots will make it into a future Blade Runner sequel. And why don't we just add that question also. Um, do you think there should be a Blade Runner sequel or Blade Runner 3 at this point? Or do you think it should just be with these two films and that's fine? I mean, I'm fine with that personally. I mean, it does good for me. But it seems like there are other plots within this one that could continue it. But, uh, yeah, um, I will see you guys in my next review. I likely will probably be reviewing the next Star Wars trailer, which is supposed to drop on Monday. And then after that, um, we shall see. Um, I know I'm definitely reviewing Thor Ragnarok. As I've said in previous videos, Star Wars for sure. Maybe The Murder on the Orient Express. Um, I've been thinking about doing that one as well. But uh, we'll see. All right. I am Chris. Thank you for watching Top Down Reviews. And I will see you in the next video. Adios.